Tell you what it happened. This is Manifest from Accra, Ghana. Make sure you tune into the How Far Show with Sheila. Oh, bless y'all. Yo, what's the deal? It's Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. The homeboy T Pain right here. Ladies, Daniel, aka the Hot Girl Coach. Hey, yo, this is Sean Polly Girls and Move Around. Telling y'all, make sure you tune into How Far. Oh, girl, we're our host. Sheila, oh, baby. Sheila, oh, baby. We love you. Whoa. Can't wait to see you. Sheila, oh, that's where White Claire Jean feels home. Lord knows, hey, Sheila, what's good? Checking in, it's your girl Sheila O. How far? What's up? What going? How you all doing? Hope you all keeping safe. My guest today is a Ghanaian rapper, a singer, and a songwriter. He won Best Rapper and Hip Hop Song of the Year at the 2017 Ghana Music Awards. He has worked with Damien Albarn, Flea, Tony Allen, our girl Erica Badu, and is featured on five songs on the Rocket Juice and the Moon album. He's a grandson of one of African's legendary composer, Sir J.H. Pabena Nketia. In 2012, BBC's arts program, The Strand, tipped him as one of the four acts to look out for, for that year, 2012. In 2015, Manifest Single, M. Anifest, all right, the single, earned him a third place honor in the International Songwriters Competition, ISC. That same year, The Guardian named Manifest as the foremost rapper on the continent. All right, the huge continent of Africa. Manifest currently lives in Accra, Medina, and also in Minneapolis. Manifest has a new joint with our bro. You all know he's my brother. Our boy Vic Mensa from The Shy. Tracks called No Fear. So go check it out, guys. Manifest, how far now? <laughs> Chris, bro, thanks yeah. for doing this. Really appreciate you. Manifest, let's first start with your name, all right? It's a very yeah. powerful name, all right? The word manifestation, the word manifest, okay? How did your name come about? It came through a creative accident, but you know, being an African and a Ghanaian, we believe in the power of names, obviously. So it was a great accident because I knew that it was also a name that would precede me well. If I named myself the Joker, you would have a certain expectation of me before you met me. But since it's manifest, it has this kind of spiritual essence of bringing things into bed. And I thought, oh, this happened while I was writing a rhyme, but this suits me. <laughs> it really does. It really does. Music runs in your blood, bruv. You are the grandson of one of Africa's legendary composers, Sir J.H. Kwabina Nketia. Is there a natural blood affinity for the craft? And was there some inspiration from your grandpa? Lots of inspiration from my grandfather. I think one of my biggest privileges growing up is growing up around him and being exposed to so much music. And because he was a composer and academic, so there was a lot of music around him, a lot of the music of Africa. And I saw his diligence in terms of uh, dealing with music and composition till he passed. Like, essentially, he was a student and a productive student of the game to be passed. So it was definitely a lot of inspiration for me. I never take it for granted that, oh yeah, you have his genes, so this and the third. I just understand that I've been privileged enough to observe and be inspired by somebody that great. That's what's up. How hard is it for a rapper, Manifest, to stay solid and not water down their craft to fit this mold of the Afro beats wave that we're all riding right now? You know, how hard is it for a rapper to stay solid and not turn to chewing gum rap just because you want the people? You want the people to be clapping and be doing the A for you and all that. How hard is it? I mean, music goes in waves and trends and you have to be your authentic self. It depends on who your authentic self is. Um, um, for me, I don't believe it to be difficult. I think I'm very inspired by the fact that African music is breaking channels. If anything, yeah, you, it, it helps everybody in the scene, you understand? And also, it, it does inform sometimes the musicality of things. I mean, if you listen to my last project, The Gamble, I was able to fuse the Afrobeats and hip hop in a way in which it was interest, an interesting creative challenge for me. So I don't think it's hard because at the end of the day, you have to find your voice and know how best to use your voice. And I know how to use mine. So just because, you know, uh, other things might be trending, you never, he, you never see Adele try to be making club songs, but you'll be big. You'll never see this in other, other areas. So we should also be rest assured that all these things can coexist and you can be part of the 
contemporary popular African music scene without doing the same kind of Afrobeats everybody's used to. You can be hip hop angled, you can be R and B angled, anything it is. Yes. But at the same time, there is a bit of a unifying identity that's beautiful that the Afrobeats helps to give us. Yeah. That's what's up. Do you consider yourself Ghana's number one rapper? The reason I asked the question. Africa. I apologize. Manifest, I apologize. Yes, please. Do you consider I, yourself I, Africa's number one rapper? Because you've been known to say that your only competition is you. Yes. I mean, I think I definitely came with that approach into the music to, to take the highest form of excellence, to get, to put my skill up and to make the best form of music I can make. So absolutely, when I'm writing, I know this. I know that I'm like, I'm that guy. I have a great admiration for a lot of rappers, so, but the, the bravado is absolutely there. And I think I definitely try and put together bodies of work to prove it. And I can stand toe to toe with any rapper on a song, whether it's me and Vic Mensa, whether it's me and other people from South Africa, Nigeria. And, 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 and it's great because it's not, it's not really as much, it's not a competition in that respect, but we're in a competitive arena. And so for me, yes, I definitely always make sure that I'm in, I'm in the top tier of what, what's going on. So yes, the number one. Add number one to my name. Manifest the number one. I, I, I second you right there, bro. I second you. How do you feel about the Grammys love-hate relationship with hip-hop? Nas, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw the article from Lil Wayne, you know, F this, F that. They all be saying what they're saying. Nas has been nominated 14 times. But only, I'm talking about the great Nas, but only picked it up for the first time in 2021 this year. So how do you feel about that love-hate relationship with hip hop and the Grammys? You know, every award scheme has a sort of an uncomfortable relationship with the artists who are supposed to be awarded. Yeah. Because there is a sense of subjectiveness that doesn't always make the people in the culture believe that it's, it's, it's accurate or it's, it's credible. But also, my, my main thing is this, whether it's Grammys or anything else. As artists, those are just icing on the cake. We are here to do the best that we can do and transform and inspire life and do the best that we can do for ourselves to have the best career ever. If you never got acknowledged by the Grammys as Tupac or Biggie, it, it changes nothing of your legacy. That's which I don't think they were they ever won Grammys I don't believe it doesn't Nas the Grammy did not validate Nas Nas is a legend and it's legendary so at the, at the end of the day it's nice to be uh, awarded but the greater reward is in, is in the legacy you can leave that lives beyond you and when, when 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 you are done with your career and when you're done with your time on earth it's not the grammys that will remember you but I remember you by the work that you've done your legacy so stay focused on the focus is how i tell my friends <laughs> <laughs> i like that stay focused on the focus i like that okay no fear with our bro from the side because um um afro zones how far with sheila O? Oh. so afro zones is the first ever afro beat show that's nationally syndicated in the u.s of a's and it started here in chicago right the home of Mensa, chance the rapper you know and a host of many others common you know host of many others that you can relate to because they're fellow rappers like like you are but the show is nationally syndicated and of course how far is a tv angle that airs in 44 african countries so we were lucky to hang out with my brother thank you my brother vic Mensa. just a few days back we had the opportunity to chop it up with him and your name came up in the interview with him so i wanted to find out from you the track no fear with shy towns rapper vic mensa how did that all come about that you guys had the opportunity to chop it up together yeah no it, it was a long time coming i mean vic and i started developing a rapport a couple of years ago maybe around 2016. Oh. i'm not sure these days I, the memory of when it is is, is, is an, yeah but it was always kind of a solid vibe and i think last year we definitely reconnected. You know, you know, one of the things about the pandemic is everybody is sitting at home. So you get a chance to actually not be moving so fast and, and, and finally get to do stuff you wanted to do. And we actually worked during the pandemic and that's how we finally reconnected. It was very quick. We we jump on the phone like, yeah, let's let's get it in. And it was legendary. And he came to Ghana, we shot the video. We have, we have such a great rapport. He's, he's like, he's like, 
he's like the bro now so it's like um yeah i've always had great respect for his work and his talent and his you know but now i even have a great respect for his humanity so that's dope so no fear even happened before he came to ghana but when he came to ghana it, was, it, it just made sense to do the visuals etc and we had we had such a good time recording other songs and just vibing you know that's the, the diaspora and the and the and the, as they like to say they're here they were there the, the people here the, the connections are always powerful you understand it really helps when the black diaspora connects whether it's people of first generation or whether it's people who are even african-american like the the black people all over the world connecting and creating and doing other stuff is always beautiful the output is always beautiful it didn't just begun begin now it started way before us but it just I hope that these kind of collabs like me and Vic keep uh, keep happening organically and also just because it helps everybody. Wonderful. Yeah. It does help everybody. How do you feel about Ghana being like the uh, center of attraction now in Africa? Like, you know, every December, Ghana be popping. You know, your president is really supportive. The year of return, asking Americans to come home and claim their heritage. How do you think that has affected the music scene? in um i wouldn't just say ghana only i'll say in africa you know yeah yeah i, I, I think independent, in, so you should be the yeah. first to do most of these things yeah, yeah i think in particular it has had a huge effect for ghana and nigeria right because yeah. you know a trip from lagos to here is not even 45 minutes so uh <laughs> so definitely it's great to have that kind of organic draw now even though yes there's been some intentionality with the year of return beyond return etc um but it's, it's wonderful because I do believe many things can happen when people meet, yeah. right? And that is only made possible. You know, it's a new digital world, email, etc. But when people touch the ground, it's a whole different feeling and a whole different vibe. So yes, I think it will. It's, it is helping the music scene thrive in terms of even the pedigree. Because like when people know a place and know the people, they have a bigger appreciation of what comes out of there. And so that's what's happening. Um, you know, in a strange way, this is not the first time this has happened to Ghana. When you look at the 60s, it did kind of happen, you know. And then you had people like W.E.B. Du Bois and stuff who relocated and went to live in Ghana. Maya Angelou came to live in Ghana for three years. It was a whole book. All God's children, he traveled in shoes. So in a funny way, his history repeats itself in a different era and through different, for different reasons. But But now I think there's an opportunity for the music and just the cultural and creative scene to get a boost from this kind of uh, newly found interest in Ghana. Beautiful. Manifest, what's your connection with Minnesota? Minnesota, man. I went to school in Minnesota. I lived in Minnesota for 10 years. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, and then that's when I used to drive to the shy sometimes. <laughs> you do <know> what? <laughs> I, I do what? No, not to taste, okay. but you know. Um, no, I definitely would come in the summers. And sometimes I'd come to the shy because I had to a visa appointment because some some of the visa places were, were there in the Midwest were hosted in the shy. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I did in Minneapolis. That's where I even began my career as an indie artist there in, in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. And it was, it was lovely aside from how cold it is. But you, I can't tell you people about cold. You know the exact same We're the kings of cold. <laughs> Shai tells the yeah. kings of cold. Who's the, who are your hip-hop inspirations? Who are you rocking with now? Yeah. And um, who are you I, looking forward to doing? I'm so fortunate about? because I feel like I have such a long line of inspiration. When I, begin, when I, when I started listening to hip-hop, it was the likes of... Um, Naughty by Nature, Nas, Fuji's, even Chris Cross, to be honest. Like, there was just a whole host of... Take it jump, jump. <laughs> like, it was effects. I mean, just a whole range. And then as I was maturing more, you know, I, I definitely was also influenced by, you know, even cats like, um, what do you call it? Lupe, you know, Chicago's yeah. Lupe. Lupe is fantastic. And then even in the current day, people like Kendrick and Cole are still inspiring even though I didn't grow up listening to them and I, I'm <laughs> but so there's a long line of inspiration that, and I allow myself to just enjoy all of that the past the present and those even coming up I I can hear a song he's a person I can see a good person with 500 followers on Twitter if the song is banging I'm inspired by it I don't need there doesn't need to be clout associated with it so it's a wonderful it's a wonderful time because there's there's a huge inspiration there's a huge treasure trove of inspiration from the past but currently to an expansive hip-hop 
uh, uh, feel that is also inspiring. The like Chicago scene, for instance, is amazing. Shmino and all these other people, I definitely pay attention to. Yeah. Yes, you do. Do you rock with rap battles? Name two rappers in the stateside that you think, yeah, you would either like to battle or be in a vest. <laughs> I beg. <laughs> I you watch. Oh, you, I mean, if it's, if it's, if it's, no, if it's on wax, I, are you talking about battle rap or if it's on wax? Like I'm talking, take about, I'm talking about you know, you know, like there's there's this battle rap they do in America where you go toe to toe and you yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah on stage. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I mean the thing is, I really love watching battle rap. It's amazing because it's lyrical and it's theatrical. The thing about battle rap is it's not enough being a lyricist or being lyrical, which I am. You actually have to invest in the craftsmanship of being a battle rapper. So before I start spewing such nonsense, I have to do that. Because this whole theater uh, is almost theatrical. It's like, I love watching it because I'm like, this is amazing. This is like, it is like what uh, Broadway is to the Hollywood. That's right. You know, it's like people on stage live there and just actually doing the thing. So I have a great appreciation. So maybe one day I'll take like some months off and then season myself and call out You're anybody. Right Anyway, what about a Vessus? What about a Vessus? Who would you like to go toe to toe with on a Vessus? Not lyrically. Yeah, that could be interesting because also it cuts across countries. Yeah. Uh, or somebody in South Africa, maybe a Stogie T or mm -hmm. a Questa or somebody. I don't know. Like it could be, it's I definitely not anybody in Ghana. It would be boring. <laughs> 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 that, and I love my comrades, but it's just it's just too like it's too partisan over here. It's nice. It will be it will be bigger if it's yeah. That would be interesting. be interesting. Good question. I, I, now 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 I'm thinking about it. I'm going to hit up people like it, you. Yeah, that's why you hear the show. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Beamy. I'm a singer-songwriter, born in Nigeria, raised in Chicago, and I have a question for Miss Sheila O. Now, Miss Sheila, why is it that women have to look good all of the time? I mean, all of the time, especially in the industry, you know, being a female artist, sometimes you feel like you gotta always, you know, keep up your looks, you know? But men can come outside into the world looking like any damn thing. I mean, like any damn thing. Why is this such a double standard? Please let me know. Hey, Beamy, how far now? How you doing? Hope you're doing well, okay? Doing the most, okay? Because I know you're out there living your best life. That was a great question you asked, and I don't even know if I have the answer, girl. It's just the way the world is. A lot of pressure is put on us women to look good, just be an eye candy, be a whole package. For you to even sell a song these days, you have to look the part. All right. I think Nas actually said something about give a lady. I'm not gonna say what he said. Give a lady, uh, you know, make her look good and just give her a hook and boom, she's gonna be a superstar. It's just really how we're made up. You know, it's what people expect. The wonderful package from women. And some of us go into the music industry, you know, selling ourselves first and not our voices. So we have to keep up with the Joneses, keep up with that lifestyle. And then guys, unfortunately, they just ugh, easy go, easy come. What you see is what you get. Not all of them though because some guys who they dress they make sure that they're bespoke as well you know so it's really to do with the individual but you're right it's really more on women but maybe that's why women tend to charge more as well when it comes to performance fees because we have to think about our wardrobe nail makeup everything you know so give or take it works out either way and guys just show up in their hoodies and give them the mic boom 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 and they're done but yeah it is what it is, but it's okay to look pretty and look good, okay? I like it. It also happens in radio as well. Remember back in the days with radio, we were just there, all you had to hear was the voice. But now in radio, I gotta be doing things like this now. And right, people wanna know what I look like, not just what my voice sounds like. So, it is what it is, but I will say enjoy it. All right, thank you. Hey, this is your girl, Charnette Gathering Keith, AKA Mrs. Black is Love, coming at you from the south side of Chicago. I am your VP. I am the one that can help you reach your financial dreams and goals. I got a question for my girl, Sheila O. Sheila, you are a mother, a wife, an entrepreneur, a radio personality, a TV personality. How do you balance all of that? But not just balance all of that. How do you balance all of that and keep it so fly and go home and keep it hot for your man? Girl, I need to know. 
follow that. Hi, Shannon. Hello, beautiful. How far now? How you doing? Hope you're keeping well and keeping safe. That was a great question you asked, and I really appreciate it. First of all, thanks for the accolades, yeah, because it's really not easy, okay, trying to balance life as a wife, as a mother, and of course, a business mogul, because you know, I had to keep my money going, all right, it's not easy, but what I try to do is I try to find a fine balance, first of all, I put God first in everything I do, I try to make sure that I get guidance from him, I think, through most of my moves, okay, on the marriage front, you know, I'm blessed to be married to someone who's easygoing and just has my best interest at heart, but at the same time, he also has to carry the cross. It is what it is. And my kids, they grew up, you know, knowing who their mother is and knowing that I am a workaholic and they follow through and they allow me to do what I do. And I also involve my family in everything I do. We do a lot of vacations and while we're out vacating, they're happy to be in the pool and knowing that mom's on the laptop and just love me all the same. So it's not easy, girl. I get it right sometimes, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I forget to get my hair down. Sometimes I forget to look good for my man. But when there's love, Everything will be alright. Alright? Alright, but keep chasing that paper though. Hey y'all, it's your girl Sheila O. How you all doing? Hope you all keeping safe. I have a new segment on my show, How Far With Sheila O, where you get to ask me any questions unfiltered. Whatever it is, I got the right answer for you. I'm gonna pick lucky winners, okay? Who actually send me videos, okay, on landscape, asking me questions and the questions and my answer is gonna be on the How Far show in over 44 countries in Africa, also on YouTube and also on social media. So please send me the videos and you can actually DM it to me. Thank you. Checking in is your girl Sheila O. How far? What's up? Well gone. How you all doing? Join me as I go one-on-one -on -one with musical geniuses, entrepreneurs, forward thinkers, the powers that be. I get them to spill their tea. Yo, what's the deal? It's Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. The homeboy T Pain right here. Hey, Stan, AKA the Hot Girl Coach. Hey yo, this is Sean Polly Girls and Mobile Rob. Telling y'all, make sure you tune into How Far. Oh, girl, host. Sheila, oh, Sheila baby. Oh, baby. Sheila oh, we love you. Whoa. Can't wait to see you. On How Far, exclusively on Hip TV, every Friday and Monday, 10.30 p.m. GMT plus one. How Far now? Watch How Far with Sheila O. Oh, Fridays and Mondays at 10.30 p.m. GMT plus one. On Hip TV, DSTV. Powered by Star Rattler, Feyruz, and Munchit. Let's okay. Talk. So now, manifest. Yeah, um, um, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be cool, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Ghana for the first time. You are time. cool. You are thank cool. You, thank, <laughs> you, thank you. That's what's up. Thanks, manifest. Um, I'm trying to come to Ghana for the first time, and I want to know, like, what are manifest slangs? What kind of slangs do you like? When you were, when you were. Oh, by the way, manifest. Whose idea was to dress up Vic Mensa in the regalia? Was oh, you, you love that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, that's no. Shout out to the, the stylist, Af uh, District. And like, yo, this is such a good idea. Like, big in the Vatican in the, the slippers, in the, the chief, chiefly slippers. Yeah, now that was that was dope. But I'm like, yo, you would not see Vic like this in any music video. <laughs> yeah, so so you were asking, like, what, what slang is popping here? Yes, what slangs are popping in? I mean, our, let, let me give you the easy ones. The first one is Charlie, what they happen? You know. Yeah, it's like, you know, that's easy. You meet somebody you're like tell you what they have, tell you what they have. Like what's up, I, right? How far? What's up? Yeah, tell you what's up. That, that one that one will forever be cool because it's that's what it is. Mm. Uh, what else do we say these days? I have, I have to uh man, I'm, I'm blanking out. Maybe I'm not that cool. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's there's another one. There's another one that I've there's another one I've used for a song. Maybe I didn't want to say it. There's another one which is like we day street. Street. So I'll be like, yo, yo, Sheila, what's up? What, what, what's up with you? Maybe you're out in the town and blah, blah. You'll be like, yeah, we did speak. <laughs> I like that. I really yeah, so, like that. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. Manifest, tell me about females. Yeah, I know I got to let you go, but I want to talk about the females which are in your industry, hip hop. Yeah. Where are they? It's a great I question, man. Where are they? 
It's a great question. Look, what Cardi be very... doing here? Manifest. I don't know if yeah. you just read Cardi just went toe to toe with Eminem and Nas in order to have I think five bill, uh, five number one billboards. You know, they just announced yeah. it the other day and everything else. So, uh, and I just got me thinking about my sisters. I'm like, so where are they? I'll tell you, this is extremely difficult for women in music in Africa in anything. Now, it's even ex more extremely difficult for a rapper or a hip hop artist in who is a woman in Ghana. I mean, in Africa, to be honest. And it's, it's kind of tragic, but I think there's still opportunity, right? Because there isn't a glass ceiling. It just means that, number one, the men also have to like make way and stop being <laughs> hugging space mm -hmm. and stop you know because a woman comes with so many problems everybody wants to sleep with her there's just so much that you have to go through just to try and reach the top it's not just about you and the women are going to studio sessions and they're they are trying to be wary of whether it will turn into another something you know and it's and it's rough so there's also a responsibility on the men to kind of create a better environment for women to flourish in and then i'll just say that look there's there's there are people coming up the youngins I mean, even Molly, who is more of a singer, but was on No Fear of Me and Vic. I mean, did a thing. I mean, the, and there's, there's there's people coming up that are going to be doing it. I think Gen Z has much more of a, a fearlessness. Mm -hmm. No fear, you know, they have no fear. So okay. I'm expecting to see more women artists pop up. Women artists and women hip hop artists pop up. But there definitely isn't an ecosystem that supports or makes it easy for any woman who's talented here. Yeah, we and we need to put you to the test, Manifest. I don't know if you have a label yet, but if you have a label, please help me sign them all up, all right? <laughs> <laughs> help me sign them all up when you get your label. Manifest, what's next for you, man? I know I got to let you go, but yeah, I don't but, want but, to because you're making me homesick. The trees, <laughs> everything behind you. I'm sitting under an avocado tree, literally. Ah, heaven. You know? Home sweet home. Yeah. So, so <laughs> next time we... No Fear featuring Vic and uh, was, was is the kind of first single of my upcoming project. So I'm definitely going to drop a project this year, sometime soon, hopefully. Um, and th that's what's next up. And hopefully, you know, we, we outside soon. Outside. <laughs> In Ghana, we are still outside, <laughs> literally. But uh, but hopefully the world opens up so that we can we can take the music to the people <laughs> directly. But yeah, it's. I'm excited. I'm excited to put out new music, to put out an album. I'm just really excited because I've put in a lot of work to really craft a body of work that I, I think I can say is potentially my best. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. Manifest, did you take your vaccination? I did mine last week. Are you Are you going to do one? Is Ghana vaccinating people? Yeah, but we have 600,000 vaccines in Ghana and 30 million people i don't think i am even high on the list of priorities i'll allow the older people and people with pre-existing uh, pre conditions to, okay. to 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 go for it because 600,000 is clearly not enough yeah. so my mother has gotten vaccinated my dad has gotten vaccinated so yeah the older people there yeah, i'm saying go join the lion <laughs> so yeah but yeah fingers crossed that you know better times you know uh condolences to anybody who's lost people it's just tough you know and um we'll, we'll we'll make it through you know in the in the 1920s they had the flu and it was a big thing this is a, this is a you know the spanish flu or whatever um now we have COVID 19. that's right we we, we, we COVID 19 which came in 2020 and it's still in 2021 oh my goodness <laughs> 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 but we, yeah. we, we, we we will see it through manifest manifest thank you so much manifest with the dot after the m manifest such an honor thank you so much for hanging out with me on the half hour show i look forward thank to you for having me yeah. and we're gonna be playing your jam no fear and looking out for your next ep we got you out here in the states and thank, thank you. you so much for hanging out with me on the half hour show Not thank you bro. Thank you so much. I enjoy this and I appreciate you. Much love. And when you come to Ghana, <laughs> I'm coming. I want my food. I want the whole Ghana experience. I ain't playing with you. Okay. No All right. Take Thank care. you so Take much. Care.